In our last video, we described subtractive synthesis, the mainstay of classic analogue synthesizers. In this video, we'll explore another synthesis technique, additive synthesis. As its name implies, it's the exact opposite of subtractive synthesis. If we were to use a visual art analogy to describe the two techniques, subtractive synthesis is like taking a piece of stone and chiselling parts off it to create a sculpture, while additive synthesis is more like carefully blending colours together to create a painting. Additive synthesis has never achieved the popularity of the other synthesis types we're exploring this week for two main reasons. To create sounds effectively with the technique, you need some physics knowledge, and building up complex sounds with a large number of oscillators and envelope generators is time consuming. Very few hardware synth manufacturers were willing to create additive synthesizers due to their complexity. But with the advent of software synthesis, there are now many available and they can offer an amazing variety of sounds. The theory behind additive synthesis is that any sound in nature is made up from a large number of simple sine waves of varying frequency and amplitude. These are all created by the vibrative properties of the object producing the sound. Some of these waves might have a harmonic relationship to a fundamental tone and we'd hear these sounds as having a definite pitch, while others don't and we hear these as noise. The reality is, most complex sounds contain both harmonic content and noise. French mathematician Joseph Fourier theorised that any sound could be broken down into a series of simple sine and cosine waves, and therefore any sound could be recreated by calculating waves of the correct phase and amplitude. This was the inspiration for additive synthesis, giving the synth programmer access to the most basic building blocks of sound, and the potential to create any sound. Traditionally, a hardware-based additive synth has up to six oscillators to use as sound sources, and each oscillator had one or two associated envelope generators. While a wide variety of sounds are possible with just six oscillators, the reality is that a natural sound may be made up of hundreds if not thousands of waves. So the sound produced by additive synths doesn't necessarily sound natural, although they do allow greater flexibility for a tone to evolve over time in a more natural way than a subtractive synth does. Modern computers can easily handle calculating hundreds if not thousands of waves, leading to the rise of software-based additive synths. Many of these have become somewhat easy to use through a method called resynthesis, where a sample is loaded into the synthesizer, it is analysed and then broken down into its constituent parts. These waves and envelopes can then be used as a starting point for creating new sounds rather than needing to start from scratch. In our next video, we'll explore frequency modulation, a synthesis method that spawned entire genres of music in the 1980s through Yamaha's DX7 synthesizer.